Hey guys, this is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. How is everyone doing today? Well, let's just get right into it because we are joined today by, we have a guest in the studio, the one and only Stephen McGee. Hi guys. From, Hi. formerly, or from, just from Summer House. Yeah. How are yeah. you? I'm doing good. Thank you for coming in. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I I double checked this morning because I never know if someone's actually going to make it, you know? Yeah, it's tricky, but it's such a nice day. I was up early. It is very nice. So yeah, so you're from Summer House and now you're here. So I figured, why don't we start at the beginning before we get into all the fun stuff? Yeah. You can give us, you know, everyone always is shocked when I ask this. Like, they're like, really? You want to hear about this? Give us the Cliff Notes version of like, where are you from? Okay, yeah. Um, so I am originally from Private, Alabama, which is a small little town. Um, grew up there, born and raised. All my family is there, like everybody. Which we cousins. saw on the show. Yeah. So I started going to school in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, it was a Christian school, a college. I was a good little Southern boy. And then... And you weren't out at this time. I wasn't then. out. Okay. And then... In my sophomore year, a senior got kicked out for being gay. Really? Yeah. Like, kicked out of in school Tennessee. your senior year. And like, in the 90s, <laughs> right? <I'm> just <laughs> Like, 2010. Wow. Um, 2009, yeah. And kicked out. And um, I was just like, I don't think I can be here. Yeah. And I came to New York over my fall break. And I was like, that's it. And I went back and withdrew. Um, from school and moved to New York at 20 years old really? in 2000, uh, 2000, the end of 2009. Wow. And I've been here, now I'm a New Yorker, I've been here 10 years. Wow. And yeah, I kind of just put it together. I moved here with like $2,000, which as you know, is nothing in New York. I mean, I was going to say like, so what did you do at 20 when you moved here? You just figured yeah. it out. I had a two month sublet in Astoria that I found on Facebook and so that was 1300 of the 2000 gone. And I just figured it out. I was like, I had that look. So I went right to Hollister to get a job when I got here. I was like, they'll hire me and I can start working right away. And I did. And then Which Hollister, the big one in Soho. Was okay. Like it was, this isn't, that, this is an important question. Yeah. The big one in Soho that got infested with bed bugs while I was there. It, it was did. a big bed bug thing. But they had the cute boys that stood in the entranceway with no shirts. Yeah, they had the people. Those were like, those were the greeters. So they had those. I was considered a model, which basically I just wore clothes that you could buy in the section of the store that I was standing in and stood there. And all I was allowed to, peop to say to people was, hey, what's up? What if someone said, can you get this in my size? You didn't there have to There was someone them. else there that would help them. I just stood. Well, that's like <laughs> even a better job. Because I've mean, worked retail way back in the day, and it was I, I was not feeling it. But like, try doing eight hours where you're just standing and can yeah. only say, hey, what's up? Yeah, that's not fun. It's not fun. And you're in the dark. Like, that was back when the stores are dark, and they're blasting the music, and... And it's the same music over and over all day. Yes. And you're like, get oh my me gosh. out of here. But they did introduce me to some good artists. I did find some good ones in there. See, that's good. So you did that and you worked and then you just were so happy you were in New York. You're like, I can be yeah. gay here. I was like, I can do anything. I'm amazing. I'm I'm in New York. And then I was, but I was broke poor. And then I started working in events and... Um, the first event that I ever did in New York, I was working for this company, and they do all the decor for the Met Gala. Oh. So that was my first event. And well, that's um, not too shabby. Yeah. So I was 20 years old, just like looking up, you know, just in awe with my mouth open at all these people. Oh, and it's like you were at the Met Gala. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like people did not know that I wasn't, that I was staff. I was yeah. wearing a tux and like, I wasn't like a waiter, so... It, and Gell is major. It was incredible. And now I've gone three times. Oh, my God. Which gosh. is, like, insane. And now to me, I'm like, oh, it's just the Gala. <laughs> I'm that person. You're like, okay. I'm, like, over the Gala. Yeah. So you did that. So you fell into events. Yeah. So I fell into events. And I so I was doing these, like, fashion-based events, which was really cool. And then I started working for a nightlife company running all of their events, which we can come back to later. Cause I yes, because that's kind of what you do now. Yeah. So okay. I was working for nightlife. And that is where I met Lindsay Hubbard. 
See, you're doing such a good transition for me because I was going to, that was really kind of my next yeah. question. Like, so Lindsay was the first cast member of Summer House you met. So, yes. So it's actually very interesting. So Summer House was not my first TV show. Really? Okay. Um, I was on this one season show that aired on E! called Playing With Fire, which was about the food scene in New York. And there was like different really? people. There was like Anna Boyardi on there, whose grandfather is Chef Boyardi. There was Candice Kumai, who's like a writer for GQ, like food stuff. Um, uh, Todd English was on it. And then our company was huh. on it as well, because um, we were like the cool, trendy restaurants. And so I wasn't supposed to be on there, but then when they're filming the first day in the office, I said something really bitchy, as people know I like to do. You do. And they were literally like, can we put a mic on you? And so we did that, and the show did not rate well. They canceled it, but they really- Because I was going to say, I have, like, I am a reality junkie. Like, I yeah. quote reality shows, and people are like, what the hell is that? I'm like, it was on for four weeks. Don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah. I've it never heard of this show. It was a six-episode show. That... Did you see my eyes lighting up? Like, I, I need to go find this it show. It came on after the Kardashians, and we were like, oh, my God, this is going to be amazing. And then what? the ratings flopped, and they moved it to Fridays. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, like, Fridays on E! I mean, you might as well just be a commercial. Yeah, and, that's um, right. But they loved our company. So we shot another pilot that they ended up not picking up. But when we shot that pilot just for our company, they pulled in Lindsay Hubbard. So that's how I met her, shooting a pilot for another show. Oh, my God. So then Lindsay was friends with the twins and Kyle and everybody. So when... And so, okay, back it up. Because everyone... Okay, let this is... Okay, so you meet Lindsay now... Before we get to all these other wonderful people, like what happens? You guys become fast friends. Yes. Yeah, so we actually became really like, fast friends. We were hanging out a lot. And like the producers for our show that never went anywhere loved it. Like we we were hanging out all the time. And, and she was in PR at this time too. She was in PR. And at the same time that we shot our second pilot, the pilot for Summer House was being shot. Really? With Lindsay's friends. And then, and I knew nothing about it during this time. And then when we did not get picked up, she jumped over to Summer House. And so, like, were people already signed at that point? Like, Carl was already involved? So, no. I know these are minor <laughs> details. But... So, at that point, they shot the pilot. And the original pilot was shot with Kyle, the twins, and Christina Gibson from season one. So, those were the yes. first four people. And then they started reaching out to their other friends. So those four were involved and then they pulled in Lindsay and therefore Everett because they were dating. Yes. And then they were looking for somebody to kind of, you know, make it a good show. So then they pulled in me. Of course. And then Carl was actually like a very last minute cast member. So like Kyle was involved in the beginning. Right. Kyle was involved. Okay. There was actually somebody else involved that ended up dropping out and Carl got put in. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So you guys, did you have to shoot a pilot? So that's kind of how you got cast. Like some yeah. people already cast and Lindsay kind of pulled some you in. Some people already and... cast and the show was picked up. And yeah, I had my first call with the producers and five days later I had a contract. Really? So it was very quick and like i never was involved in any of the pilot or pre-production so in war like so were the the work as twins and like kyle like they were already going out to the hamptons kind of together yeah so they were going out together true. and i was going out to the hamptons already with the nightlife group because we used to throw these brunches out there so i had spent a lot of time in the hamptons already but had never met any of them so when we first started filming the show the only people i actually had hung out with more than once was Lindsay and the twins. So once you were cast, was there were the producers saying, so I guess they weren't really saying like in the city, like, oh, you guys need to hang out. You need to start making chemistry. Like, were they kind no. of forcing, they was just like, No, so the, the idea behind the original cast was that everyone was friends somehow. Like, not that everyone was friends right. with each other, but there was nobody random. Nobody was just plucked in. Like, everybody did have a real long connection right. to the group. So it was kind of, if you look at it as like a nucleus and, and everyone branched off from there, but there was no just random thrown in person. Totally. Like there is now. 
So, which we're going to get to. <laughs> so when you got this contract, were you like thrilled? I mean, so basically like the contract gives you, let's just break it down because listen, I've sat in down in a podcast setting with Hannah, Carl, and Everett. Hmm. Yes, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> we, we're going to go, we're going to go through it. We're going to go through it. We have a lot to say. So what was I going to say? So you must have been excited. Like it's basically a free place to live in the Hamptons, right? I mean, the house is free. Yeah, I was excited. You know, I didn't know much about the group. So it kind of made me a little hesitant about the show. I'm like, oh, whatever. But for me, I had, this was, and like Playing With Fire was the only show that ever made it to air, but I had had people approach me for a long time about doing shows. And I shot about it. multiple pilots. And this was the first one that literally just fell into my lap. And I was like, it's meant to be. It's a sign. Totally. So I should just go for it. Totally. I mean, I talk about that too. Like I've been involved with so many shows and like one I've been on for a minute, but like they never see the light of day. People don't realize like you could be involved in 800 things. It doesn't make me right. anything. Like until that's it's on same... air. Or even when it is on air, like oh, show, yeah. right? Like it's there like... was in season two when Amit, who I always forget was on that season. Always. They literally... He was there for like three weekends that they just edited him out of. Like he's just completely gone, but he was there. I completely forgot that he even existed until this morning when I was just saying maybe I should spend five minutes preparing for this little <laughs> sit down. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah. And I literally had to like read the fine print about which season he was in. I just always forget. I always forget about him. I, 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 I would agree with that. So, and is that true? So like the house is free, but like you guys have to pay for everything else like the booze the cleanup all that yeah so the house is free originally they were talking about making us pay up for a portion of it and we were like absolutely not yeah. like why why would we even be doing this but like the also the reasoning behind that is because the house is much larger than what you even see because there's so much that's just for production like right. we have a team of like 40 to 50 people there at all times and they're also somewhere like wow so the house is like twice the size that it looks like because so much is for production and I'm not paying for that. Yeah. But we do incur a lot of expense. Um, obviously, the Hamptons is expensive. And then we go out after camera too. But basically, the way that, you know, you look at it is that and that Bravo positions it, which is true, is that it's an investment in yourself. So like when we throw like when I threw the welcome dinner for season two, like I paid for that. Because it was an investment right. in making me look better, which right. so it's like you do. We did spend a lot of money, and yeah. I mean, you spend a lot of money. Like as lame as it is, I'm like, I don't want to wear the same thing. So I'm buying clothes and like getting rid of stuff, and it's just a lot. But, I get it. I get it. Okay, so you're cast. You're out there for the summer. You start to film. So. As far as, like, before we get to all the filming, I mean, is it fun? Like, were you having fun? Are you like, this is a fun summer house? Cameras are no... You know what I mean? Take the cameras aside, or were you like, oh, my God. We would have really fun times as a group of people. Like, when we would go out off camera, we would have a lot of fun. And, like, I really enjoyed hanging out with a lot of those people. Um, season one, I think, was a little stressful just because it's the first time and, like... We don't know what we're doing, and the crew doesn't really know what they're doing. Like, as far as telling the story, they're not sure where things are going. And there's a lot of pressure because, unlike other shows, like at Labor Day, you're done. And we're only filming on the weekends. And if we don't have it interesting, then you're kind of screwed. And, like, am I doing all this to get like terrible ratings? Right. No. Like, so it truly is over Labor Day. Like, yeah. that's it. Like, yeah. Good, bad, There's no boring. more story that's coming after Labor Day. Interesting. Right. So that's a little bit different than some other shows. Yeah. Because like if they need to throw something else in or something comes right. up that's interesting, they can add it. But the story is done. And there's <sighs> no like reshoots afterwards or like confessionals or Confessionals anything. are right. after Those the fact. Come after. But okay. That's kind of what I thought. All right. So then during the filming, you know, was there like how natural was it you know how involved were producers i mean were producers like okay listen and i've talked to a lot of people on different bravo shows so i've mm -hmm. heard it all you know you know were they saying like steven like you should be more mad at lauren for this like well, what do you mean you're not mad i mean things like that producer i do some manipulation i guess is what i'm asking for yeah well 
for me, looking back on it, you know, you got a lot of vision. Um, but for me, I don't think that I had a lot of manipulation. I think that there, I think that the way the producers work the majority of time on a show like Summer House is that they never created situations, but they had to make our situations make sense. So there were conversations that had to happen because we are friends and we do talk outside of the show that's not on camera. And sometimes, especially season one, we were really bad because we were new. We didn't know. And, you know, we'd be furious at somebody when we'd leave on Sunday and then we'd show back up on Thursday as friends. And the producers were like, what the fuck? Can yeah. We, can we say fuck? Yeah. They're like, what the fuck? You can say fuck? anything you want. Okay. They're like, what the fuck? Like, you can't do that. Like, you can't just come back and be friends and the viewers are going to have no clues. So sometimes there were situations where they have, and, and some of our situations are long-term underlying arguments that aren't really clear. Right. So some conversations had to be made that, like, will explain things. But for me, I don't think they ever created anything. For other people... I think that there is a lot of story that was created and a lot of story that was edited for people because they simply aren't interesting. Right. And and it's an ensemble show. And, you know, I think the housewives feel this a lot too because they don't want they don't want somebody like a Bethany that feels like they're controlling the show. They they need everybody equal on equal playing fields. And that's how their shows succeed because no one thinks that they're too big for the show. Um, that's how they keep you. It's a real mind fuck. And that's how they keep you in check. Like, I, I think that the majority of the story sometimes came from a small group of people. But when we saw the final edit, like everyone kind of looked equal, which wasn't the fact. Like, who do you think was responsible for most of the exciting parts of the show? The first season, the first season. I mean, I think the twins, I think I did a lot the first season. I did a lot of string pulling um, the first season because I think there was something about me not really knowing people well that when they had to open up to somebody, they chose to open up to me. Right. And then I went and obviously told people what they told me. You <laughs> um, did. And like, what was your, so the first season, like what stands out? Like for, in your opinion, like what was the overall arc of the storyline for the first season? That one, I think, was a little confusing. The overall arc, I feel like... I think that the story season one was weaker because it was hard to tell. Like, I'd say it was kind of the... Like Lauren and Carl-ish. Yeah, I'd say it was more relationship, romantic relationship-driven and basically the destruction of relationships. That makes um, sense. Because Lindsay and Carl, uh, Lindsay and Everett also fell apart. Yes. Um, and then, so I think that that was kind of the main thing, but like it was, it's tough because that was like, especially in a first season, you have to spend so much time, like also getting the, to know people, like the audience has to get to know them before they even care about their relationship drama. Right. And in a 10 episode season, that's not that's easy to hard. do. That's hard. And then the first season's over, was there, and then it starts to air, was there, I mean, did everyone want to come back? Like, what What was the consensus of, like, this show was going great, we can't wait to hear? I mean, I assume most people wanted to come back for a second season. Yeah, I think everybody pretty much wanted to come back, and we, I mean, there was even talk of, like, that we were going to get a reunion the first season. Um, that would have been good. Yeah. <laughs> the fact is, is that two of us were away and I was like, they asked us like if we could shoot the reunion next week. And I was like, I'm in Disney World. Cause <laughs> like, that's... I was like, if you want to reimburse my trip, then sure. Right. Cause otherwise... we weren't going to get paid. Um, but I think that the show was good. And, I, and especially like what we all learned from it and what production learned from it, it was gonna, there were, was talk of a lot of ways things would be different or right. more efficient for the next season. So I think a lot of people wanted to come back. And then it did come back and there was a second season. And this mm -hmm. was the season when more of the drama between like you and Carl came out. Right. I think this was a season when the drama was more personal and more real than yes. the first season. Yes. Um, it was, for me, I was, it was like, I was already in like such a kind of a dark place in my life already right. going into it. And 
and I was going through a lot of stuff, but for me, that season was what boiled me over with the fake stuff. And like so a how lot so? of t- like <sighs> I mean, there's some people who literally have nothing going on in their lives and maybe shouldn't be on a reality show. Would you like to mention <laughs> one name? I mean, two names. Carl literally has nothing going on. Like, he has nothing going on. And I think a lot of story for him was created. Um, I think that his mom coming out and all that was bullshit. His parents, <laughs> I feel so bad for saying all this because I'm trying to be a nice person it's okay. in my life now. But You're like, amongst friends here. Like, his parents were getting divorced during season one, and we never heard a peep about it. And now in season two, when you have nothing going on, we have to hear about it. So, and when you're looking like an asshole so that people feel sorry for you. Right, because like, of all the drama. He was like, what are you saying? He was looking like an asshole because of Lauren. Yeah, because okay. of everything else. And, and they they can't have somebody that viewers are just like so over. And so I think that that's partly him and partly production. But I think that for me, I just got so tired. Like I'm tired of filming for your fake businesses. This multiple people, like I'm tired of filming for your fake business. I'm tired of filming for like the business that you hope you can start with the money you make from the show. Like I'm tired of filming for things that aren't real when we're willing to put out the real shit. And like, I mean, they had to scrape together two pennies to fly home to Alabama for me. So, like, I, it just really kind of boiled me over that, like, I'm out here willing to put everything, all the personal stuff out there and on the line. And then, like, we're creating storylines for other people that are boring. Right. So you feel Carl's was the most fake this season, that second season. Yeah, I would say that he had a lot. And obviously... I have opinions about the way that there was the editing on, like, the big drama between him and I. I mean, I think everybody that was there knows what really happened. And, like, it's so exhausting to keep talking about it because, I mean, you know, people do believe what they see on TV for fact. And, like, I'm, like, like, I didn't just come to a bar and say, like, you got a blowjob from a guy. (laughs) Like, and sit down and be like, you got a blowjob. And I just think that, like... The thing that also burned me up so much was, like, when you get a good edit, you just sit there and crush your hands and, like, be happy with it. You don't rub it in because you know what really happened. Right. You know that you got literally, like, your ass saved. So just be grateful. Don't try to rub it in on social media or in your interviews even because the truth will always come out. The truth always comes out, and that and that and, really was what you're. That was technically the demise of your friendship. Per yeah. Se, was well, the demise of comment. my friendship with Carl was actually before we started filming that summer, weeks before I found out that he was saying a bunch of stuff about me, and that's why coming in, like I think it didn't make sense to viewers because they didn't give me the airtime to explain, but right. like. Coming in that like that first dinner on that season, I was like furious already, and like the whole dinner went to shit. But like, um, we had he had basically said to other people that they needed to stop talking to me because they couldn't trust me. But the truth was that he was telling them different stories about himself that he didn't want me putting the pieces together, right? And figuring out that he's kind of a con artist. Interesting. Yeah. And now after this second season, when we go into a third season and then they make these casting changes, Mm -hmm. you know, listen, I've, what, in your words, what happened between the second season and the third season? Like, yeah, because I've not from Carl per se, just in general, I've been told things. You know, I'm not. I would want, what have you been told? Well, I mean, I listen, I haven't been told anything by anyone at Bravo, but like what has been implied to me. I want to know what you were told yes. because there's so many rumors. Right. There's, and listen, there's I, some crazy rumors. Too. It's like, this is what I say, because like, I'm just using this as an example. Like I'm literally friends with housewives that despise each other. And I'm like, I am Switzerland. Mm-hmm. This one do not like so. And somehow it all works out. So this is just my, you know, it's been implied to me that, you know, you and the Workus twins 
particularly like Lor- you and like Lauren like created so much drama that certain people were like, look, it's basically them or me make a decision because we're not dealing with this fucking drama. That's what's just been implied to me. That could be true. We yeah, and like did, literally, uh, I, I, I really don't. Like, it's never. Well, I, I don't know. It could be true. We yeah. also did the same thing. Um, yeah, I'm sure. On our side, so I think basically the season aired, and while the season was airing, we were kind of like, okay, you know, there was a lot of annoying stuff. I mean, there was a lot that was hard for me to deal with when the editing was happening. I was getting so much hate. And like, did you get a lot of hate on social media? Oh, I got so much hate that I literally had to like just delete every social media from my phone. People are awful, um, right? And over situations that weren't that were you not necessarily given the full story, right? Like people don't know, right? And um, then the social media from other people on the show started to be, you know, not. They were not sitting back and being humble about their good edit, and like they're putting it out. Yeah, Kyle. they're putting it out, and so that kind of got us fuming going into the reunion. Like they would say things on social media, like a Carl would say, like, right? Stephen, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're fuming going into the reunion, um, and basically going into the reunion, it was me, Lauren, Ashley, Lindsay, and Danielle were like one team, and okay. then. Um, Amit, Carl, Kyle, and Amanda were like Team B. Okay. And um, we like we were all together. Team A was all together the night before the reunion. We watched the final three episodes. We like came up with a whole plan, and uh, the reunion happened, and it was very high. I just knew that I should keep my mouth shut about anything that wasn't about me. Um, I. Crafted a very careful apology because I was not sorry for what I said. Right. But I was sorry, or I was sorry for what I said and how I said it, but I wasn't saying that it was a lie. So um, you, and the, this is that you said to Carl that he got his dick sucked by a guy. Yeah, that. And, and you're just, saying that's not a lie. Well, I'm saying that that he told me that. So, um, I think that after that reunion, we went through a few weeks of not knowing if we were picked back up. We found out the show was picked back up, and we started kind of having conversations with producers and Bravo. And I, we basically said that, you know, we wouldn't want to do it if it was the same way. Like, something had to go. And, and I was also very, at that time, I was very upset with Colin and Amanda, too. Um, Why were you upset with them? I felt like that season they kind of tried to dodge some of their relationship problems and cover them up on camera. And that made us look crazy. Like, I think that we had a lot of issue with their relationship. And it looked like I don't think you ever got to see what we were seeing. Because when it would come time for them to talk on camera, they would just be like, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. And like... A lot of stuff would happen off camera, like a lot of fights that then when we'd bring it up on camera, they'd just be like, I don't know what you're talking right. about, like, and wouldn't own it. So then we looked kind of crazy. So I was upset with them at the time. And um, I think that we kind of just didn't want to do it with them. And then honestly, <laughs> the way that I look at it and from what I know is that. I think that they were the easier group to integrate. If you have to replace half your cast, they were the easier group to integrate people in because they're not as strong of personalities. So they were easier to integrate a bunch of new people with um, and keep them all more level. And I think that they also had the weakest performance in season two and were going to be the cheapest group to bring back. That's how I look at it. And that's what I think. Interesting. Interesting. Because... I know that they did not want me off the show. Bravo. Immediately after the decision was made, I was called into Bravo offices. I had meetings with development. I had, they begged, you know, producers 
they begged us to keep an open mind to still film that summer. We weren't fired. They didn't want us off the show. They just couldn't figure out how to make it work. Right. And we weren't willing to budge. If they came down and said, you know, will you do it still? We would have said no. Um, right. Like if you weren't a cast member, you were yeah. like a friend of or. Whatever. Oh, I would have said no to that. But if they had asked us just to all go back in the house together, I would have said no. Right. Um, the same group of people. Yeah. I mean, they, uh, these rumors came out that we were fired. One rumor was floating around that we were fired because we were caught in a racist cocaine fueled rant on camera. Like on somebody's cell phone camera that was circulating, and that's why we were fired. It's just all ridiculous, right. like people speculating. But like, they asked us to come back to the point where, like, I had to be like, if you run into me in the Hamptons and you put a camera on me, I will literally lose it. So right. don't even think that you're going to send people to approach me. Don't. And don't that try was to... the same, probably like with Lauren and everyone. Yeah, else. like don't try because I'm not interested. So then they film, you're in the Hamptons, you kind of don't run into each other. Yeah. Now, as far as people, because now, I mean, we're going to talk more about this, but I have lots of questions about all these other people and lots of other Bravo celebrities mm-hmm. that you're friends with. So now the show goes on. It's like season three. Like, have do you, I mean, forget about before, like before this, like, did you know, like Paige, Hannah, like, have you ever met these people? <laughs> Jules, Luke? It's very interesting. Um, I don't even know who Jules and Luke are. Um, I've never... They're new. I didn't watch season three, not okay. watching season four. Um, it wasn't that good of a season when I was on it, so why would I watch it now that I'm not? Um, but, so, I actually introduced Jordan and Hannah. I forgot about Jordan. They were the only... I was the only person that they knew going in. This whole thing about they were friends with Lindsay, that's all bullshit. Um Lindsay knew Hannah from being interviewed by her at Betches. She didn't know her. Right. I introduced them because during season two, I and I told you I did that unapproved podcast with Betches interview with Betches during season one that I got in trouble for, and that's how this whole Betches relationship with Bravo started. But I introduced um, Jordan to my producers during season two because I was going to shoot a work story for them because I was planning an event for them. Because Jordan worked at Betches and yeah. Hannah worked at Betches. Yeah. So okay. I was going to shoot a story for them and ended up not working out. But that's how they met Jordan and Hannah. And therefore Paige. Um, right. Because she worked at Betches too. Yeah. And she was so that's like how a the last producers minute. Met them. She was like a last minute pull in before they started shooting. Because two people dropped out before season three. Interesting. But, um, yeah, so I was the only person they knew. Got yeah. So, like, when they were at Betches, they just what, got to know Hannah and Jordan and were like, oh. Yeah, I we, think We that, need to fill these roles-ish. Mm-hmm. It's very, it was very interesting. And there was a whole, like, thing. I was kind of upset with Hannah for a while because she never told me that she was doing it. I wouldn't have cared. But she never told me that she was going to do it. And I thought it was just a little weird. But we're over that now. Well, that's why Teresa Giudice still is not necessarily over Melissa Gorga, her sister-in-law, being interviewed Yeah, for months and getting hired I just think at. it's a little like, like literally we had, we have been together many times while she was going through the interview process. And like, really? I'm like, she I don't know. She just never mentioned it. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know why you wouldn't have asked me anyway, because I wouldn't have cared. And then she tried to say, well, I didn't tell you, but I always thought that I would be on it with you. I didn't think that you would be gone. And I'm like, so still, why wouldn't you have told me? It still would have been weird if I was still on it. Right. Um, but like, I didn't have any ill will towards Lindsay and Danielle who were on our team still doing it. You know, I didn't care that they did it. Um, I actually helped Danielle with her contract for season three. So, like, I wasn't mad, but then, you know, things kind of turned. But now, so for today, like, in today, like, right now, today, like, do you still speak to Hannah? Hannah and I didn't, like, we. You were we hung out friends. socially, but we were never best right. friends. But, like, when I see Hannah, love her. We, we talk. Like, everything's fine with Hannah. I love me some Hannah, I have to say. Yeah. Um, what about Jordan? You don't have anything. Nah. Do you think Jordan's gay? I, I don't. Mean, everyone know. Else I think does. he's just weird. I think he's just weird. I don't know anything about him, but I know that he's not cut out for reality TV. 
I know that. <laughs> I, I yeah. He's he's an interesting one. Um, and then what about like Danielle and Lindsay? Like you're still close with them or no? Mm, I saw Lindsay. I don't know, like a year ago, and Danielle so that's maybe. A while. Like I an don't odd. hear from them. I we made an effort. I made an effort with Danielle, and she. I think the last time maybe I saw both of them was at Lindsay's company holiday party, like a year ago. And, and you're still close with like, Lauren. Yeah, I'm still very close with Lauren. You we talk, talk every Lauren day. I just time. I talked to her this morning. Does she live? Does she still live in New York? She lives in San Diego. Oh, wow, that's what I thought. Yeah, I thought she, she moved. Had. She moved a year ago. Um, and then, obviously, not talking to Carl. I saw him. Did you guys speak? No. <laughs> I saw. Him. I mean, I'm assuming no. I saw him uh, a couple months ago at the box. And he was there with somebody, and I was just like, what the fuck? Because he won. That was, like, the place. I mean, I basically lived at the box. I would go there every night. So if you want to see me, that's where you go. And he was right. standing at the bar, and I just went right to the bar right next to him to get a drink. And he left the whole club. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. And then, actually, and you, recently, yeah. Kyle and Amanda and I spoke. I really? hadn't spoken to them in... A year and a half. Um, and I was out with Kristen Doty. When which, she was... oh, she's on the top of my list to talk to you about, which we'll get. Well, yeah, it's that night. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hold on this for okay. a minute. Because it's funny. I, she's on my list of people to talk to you about. Okay. Listen, you're really, you really need to start a podcast because <laughs> you're giving me all my segues. She's like number one on my list. But before we get there, so talk to me because I've been at, events like the OK Magazine party mm -hmm. and I observed you and Lauren with Lan Locken like Oh my god times. this was so that time the OK Magazine party up and down yes so that like was every actually time the last I, night that I had spoken to Kyle and Amanda oh until recently okay so it's just it was just in that period, whenever that was, it was that actual party. But I kept seeing you and Lauren. Like, I think even at Watch What Happens Live, you guys were yeah. there with. So I'm with like, Leanne. I just found that an interesting. So how did this friendship between you and Lauren and Leanne come along? So it Leanne actually from all Dallas. started at Jill Zarin's Luxury Luncheon. Okay. So in we the were, Hamptons. Yeah, we were at Jill Zarin's Luxury Luncheon in the Hamptons. And Leanne was there. I met so many people there that I have so many weird stories about, but and you know it's weird because like this past summer, this mm -hmm. that Jill Zarin didn't do it. It was hosted by Kristen Tateman, yeah. and I went to the party, and it was much different. Yeah, I mean, no offense to I just it was I there was literally Kristen, Giselle, Brian, and Ramona was there for about yeah. thirty seconds with my friend Maria. Yeah, go on. it was strange. So. Jill Zarin's luxury luncheon. We met Leanne. So the way that we were connected to Leanne is that our producer on Summer House, who did season one and two, um, and then left a lot. This is a little tea. Like Tell all me. the production left after season two when they did this huge casting thing. Nobody came back because they were like, like it's dead. Yeah, all the executive producers and all the field producers left. Um, but. Our producer did Dallas. So she had always been telling us about Leanne. And that's how we met Stephanie um, as well and Carrie all through our producer, Sam Hart's band, who is an EP on Dallas. Um, we love Stephanie. Yeah, she's great. And Carrie. I loved Carrie Duber. I love Carrie Duber. Um, I love all three of them, actually. So we met Leanne and her friend Chad at Jill Zarin's. And we were there with Leanne. I'm trying to remember who else was there. Leanne, I know Vicky was there, which was crazy. Um, she you had think just gotten Vicky? her facelift. I thought she was surprisingly nice, but she was still Vicky. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. she was really nice, but still, like, yeah. what I thought she would be. Like, That's she did listen to me say my name, but then That's was like, it. okay, so what do you think about my facelift? Like, yeah. She's not the worst, but she's yeah. certainly not the best Yeah, as far as being, you know, warm and fuzzy. So it's funny because Lauren and I had gone out to, we had gone out that morning. We were going to come back that night for Jill's errands, but Vicky ended up leaving Jill's house. So Jill let me and Lauren stay at her house. Really? So we stayed in Vicky's room. Oh my God. What do you think of Jill? 
I thought she was incredibly sweet and so nice. And we had met, is his name Brody? Her new beau? Gary. Gary. Gary Brody. That's yes, his name. Gary. So like, we met. Second, sorry. Um, Gary. He's nice. Yeah, he was yeah. really nice. And like, I've gone to events for his clothing line um, yeah. after. But like, Jill is so great and her daughter is amazing, Allie. So we had a really great time. And. That's also when I first met Juliet from Ladies of London oh at the same God. event. And Juliet and I like got so close and we text all the time. I'm we had so much fun. I'm obsessed with I'm Ladies obsessed with Lady. her. Like I'm obsessed with Carolyn Stanberry. Yeah. I've obsessed, never met her. Obsessed. I have never met her. I tried to meet her when she was in New York once. We had a lovely DM exchange. And then when I suggested I show up at her hotel just for like a hello, it, it, she went radio silent. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, she thinks I'm a total stalker now. She was so nice. I do know Luke, her hairstylist. but Who now, he's associated with, I think he works with Dorinda. Dorinda. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he like I don't, moved to New York. Yeah. So he works, I mean, he's always in Dorinda's pictures now. Yeah. Um, that's funny. So, Julia, what's Juliet like? She's incredible. Like, honestly, I was like... she still lives in London, right? Yeah, she still lives in oh London. God, I love her. She's got her kids with their... We like... I remember watching her FaceTime her kids and their little, like, cute little American-British accents. And she's like, from, like, like... Isn't she from, like, Chicago Chicago, or like, yeah. I just so, made that up, but... Good that job. was literally one of the best shows that was ever on Bravo. It was so good. Phenomenal. I think it was really expensive for them to film. You think? But Probably. it was such a good show, and, like, they had a really solid cast. I mean, a really solid cast. Phenomenal. Like, like, when, you know, some of the people that are on New York claim to be socialites, these people were socialites. Like that other one that was like the model. Annabelle. Yeah. Like the whole thing was like, it was it was a great cast. Yeah. It was brilliant. Like at first I was like, I don't, and I was like, this is the best show ever. Julia is amazing. She's like, like your cool big sister. Like. Oh my God, I love her. I mean, she's so I, I literally, I've never had any interaction with her. So that's like amazing. That's okay. So you met her. And then, so what, you just, you and Lauren met Leanne and just, it was love at first sight? Yes. So Leanne is just, honestly, Leanne is, like, Leanne is Leanne on the show. But, yeah. like, in real life, obviously, her life's not so full of drama. Right. Um, like, but, like, her mannerisms, every way, everything, it's all the same. Like, she's just so nice and, like, very warm and loving and, like, What do you caring. think about all that she's going through now? I feel and like has she talked to you about it? About the allega like the racism and things. Right. I mean all these I allegations. So I didn't watch the full season. I started watching and like I just kind of cut myself off from reality TV for a while. But um I feel really bad for her because I know that that's not Leanne. Right. I know it's not her. Like she is such a nice person and literally she does not have like I've never seen or felt like any prejudice from her at all. Right. And so I feel like that was kind of a really desperate and really shitty thing for the cast and producers to kind of like gravitate to as a storyline. I thought that I, that was really I mean, shitty. I don't know if you know, but like I wonder if she's worried that now she's going to lose her job even if Dallas is even coming back, which I'm not even so sure that it is, but what 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 do I know? All I know and is I, that I've been told that it's coming back a hundred percent, but I yeah I know that it hasn't the been. There's no contracts that are out. No, it hasn't been picked up. And last year they were already shooting by now, Someone, which isn't normal. I would say that like for shows like that, that they can rotate so. through like maybe a fourteen to thirteen month like. Like, your start date varies by, like, two months every time because it allows you to be more interesting. You're not shooting the same events every right, year. Right, but, That makes sense. But I know it's not been picked up. But I don't think Leanne's job is in jeopardy. I think that if her job could be in jeopardy because of that, that they would have taken it out of the show because yeah. they can't lose Leanne on that show unless they want it to be the final season. Right. So I think that if it was a risk that they would have to fire her for what they edited it to look like, that they would have taken it out altogether. Because that is what they do. Like, I know for a fact. Right, they cover shit up. 100%. Like, I know for a fact, without mentioning any names, that they had to reshoot scenes for this upcoming season of New York because one woman appeared too mean. 
in her scenes. And they literally had to reshoot scenes because That's they crazy. didn't want this woman to appear too horrific. Right. Like, that. I mean, that is a very interesting point because that just goes to show that if they, they like you, choose they'll make, yes. who's going to be a star. Which they is, they handpick people from the seasons, and yes. they always producers always told us they build you up and they tear you down. They build you up and they tear you down because that's how they keep everybody in check. Yeah, it's true. They don't want you coming in and demanding a bunch of money or going to try to get your own show on another network. Like no, they don't want you to feel like you have any power. No, so I mean that to your point with this New York thing, it's the same thing that you are basically saying they did with Carl and you yeah. as far as who they chose to kind of build up. But I know that for a fact. Okay, so that was one of your friendships that I was obsessed with. Yeah, was, I love Leanne, Leanne, though, and she's going to be in town um, next week. Really? Yeah. We all need to go out. We're going to see her, and then she's coming back in April. I um, love her. I, she's just a really great person, and I always have fun when I'm with her. Now, let's go to my current obsession. I have many obsessions on Bravo besides Carolyn Stanberry. I am I was literally in Detroit, Michigan this past Wednesday oh. for less than 24 hours to go see Rachel O'Brien and Miss Doty do their Doty. I am literally How obsessed. Was it? it was I'm going to do a whole review on a show and okay. tell you all of the insanity that happened that night. Listen, and I gave a review to a certain podcast live and I got chastised because I didn't like it. It was good. It really was. You know what it is? It's like First of all, Rachel O'Brien is funny. Yeah, she's hilarious. And so it was very just natural. And so, yeah, I mean, and like it helps that they're actually friends. Like they just right. talk like friends. That's the thing. And so, like, you didn't, and like they also talked about the show. Like, I think if you're going to do a live podcast and you're from a show like Vanderpump Rules, you can talk about a lot of things. But if you're not going to talk about Vanderpump Rules at all, right. that's really strange. Now, I have weird tastes. Like, for a while, I was saying Tinsley was my favorite New York housewife, and people thought I was insane. Yeah, like, I have really strange tastes. Like, Carolyn Stanberry, okay, that's the obvious choice. Yeah. Dorit is my one of my favorite Beverly Hills girls. So, from Vanderpump huh. Rules, Kristen is it for me. She is okay. number one, obsessed, for lots of reasons. So, talk to me about your friendship with Kristen, because I know the last time, yes, the last time she was here, which gets into the night. See, I didn't realize you were there at night. I know you were with Kristen during the day, and then I saw her at night. She posted 7,000 drunk stories with yeah. Kyle and Amanda. So talk to me about Kristen. And a funny fact. So I was at Watch What Happens that night, and then I – but I didn't know you were there. Oh, and yeah. And then I was waiting outside for Kristen because I needed my picture because that's what I do. And then, like, after the fact, I was like, oh, that was Steven. Yeah, so I was there. So, um, so obviously Kristen and I met on Summer House, and um, – I even filming that I literally going into that because I had watched Vanderpump Rules and I was like, oh my god, I could never like Kristen. That's never. what everyone says. And like I met her and we had so much fun and she was so great. And honestly, like Kristen is the best person I feel like. And um, after we shot that, um, whenever the Vanderpump Rules people were in town, they always called me and Lauren. So we would hang out with them. And I first kind of hung out with Kristen back when she was still with Carter. Was she the and, main, like, so out of all those, like, she was the main one you became friends with? Like, as opposed uh, to, like, Stassi? No, I think it was interesting. I think I was close, very close with Stassi. And I was very close with Stassi, Katie, and Kristen, actually, all of them. The only one I wasn't really close with was Sheena. Um, and all three of them, at the time, they were all getting along. So we would hang right. out in LA. We would hang out whenever they would come here. Any of them, I would see them. I've had many late nights with Stassi, many late nights with Katie and Tom, like, um, and Jackson, Brittany. Um, Interesting. And I think that with Kristen, so we started developing a friendship. And then when I would go to LA every time, you know, I would see them all. But Kristen was is one of the only ones who she'll text me random times to check in. I mean, this is a busy girl. Like yeah. and now I feel like our friendship's even stronger. But even in the beginning when it was just like social yeah. friends, she would still text and check in and see how we were. And like every time she would let me know. And like honestly, Kristen is fiercely loyal and and really, actually, really nice. And I think that's I why people that. are so polarized by her. Um, like, they either love her or hate her, basically love. based on who her loyalty is to. Um, because that group happens so much, but she always picks a side. 
And that makes people fall out with her because she she doesn't remain neutral. She has loyalty to someone. And you don't, like, you've lost touch with the others, like Stassi. Because, I mean, Stassi and Kristen don't speak now. Yeah, I see Stassi. I, honestly, I think that um, my relationship with Stassi kind of uh, it just kind of fizzled out, I think, after Summer House because she still had to maintain a good relationship with Kyle and Amanda. Which she does. And other people. Or at least it yeah. seems so. And also for see. a little brief period of time, I had a little falling out with Taylor Strecker. Um, really? Tell me about that. Uh, well, it all had to do with Summer House and the Hannah thing. Really? And, um, oh, because is Taylor, are Taylor and Hannah close? Well, I introduced... Taylor and Hannah. Oh, wow. Um, and Hannah was on Taylor's show, and it wasn't... It was more along the lines of, like, I had asked... Because when Hannah went on, I had just asked Taylor. I was like, I really hope that you wouldn't film. Because she had already filmed with me. And I was like, I really hope you wouldn't right. film with Hannah. Because I knew that they were trying to make season three more work-focused. Right. And I knew that Hannah... Wasn't working at Betches anymore because Betches did not want to be on the show. And um, she was doing Taylor's radio show. So I knew that they would try to film Hannah on Taylor's show. Right. And I was just basically like, I really hope you wouldn't film with that. And she basically was like, I just need to think about this. Like, it's hard for me to say. I was like, you know, I wouldn't ask you to do this if it was New York Housewives, but like the Summer House. Like, right. three people watch the show. Right. Like, it's not going to be some major miss. Um, and we just kind of let time eat at us. And, like, we're like, okay, well, I need to think about this. And I was like, okay, let me know. And, like, I didn't hear from her. And then, like, she felt like I was putting her in a bad position and said something about it on a podcast. And we re we made up probably, like, in August. But it was, like, a year-long feud. Um, because like she was saying stuff about me on podcast, so then I'm like, I'm gonna say stuff about her. Right. So it was just really shitty. Like we were like two children fighting, but we ran into each other at Claudia Oshry's single release where Margaret was actually there. We actually ran into each other because I'm of Margaret. Obsessed with Claudia also. Because Margaret was talking to me, and then um, Taylor Strecker came to talk to Margaret, and so we were like face to face. So we just started talking. And we we're like, this is dumb. Like, and he buried the hatchet. Yeah, and. Um, Katie and Tom, I just think, I don't know. I love them. And, like, when I see them, I see them. But, like, it's not like they're here right us. now. And, you know, we didn't see each other. But Kristen, I always see Kristen. And I always see Jackson, Brittany. Jackson, Brittany really? are amazing. So you're, close, so you're close with Kristen and Jackson, Brittany. Yes. So, like, I spent Labor Day with Jackson, Brittany. I always go over to their house when I'm in L.A. Like, they've offered to let me stay with them. Like, they're so nice. And, like, I saw them when they were here for Watch Rappin's Live. Like, they are, Brittany is obviously the sweetest person. Uh, she and, like, seems, amazing. I mean, I've met her many times, but not to the extent you have. She seems like the nicest person yeah, ever. Yeah, they were so nice. And then honestly, Jax is somebody who I was kind of like okay with. But then uh, probably like a year and a half ago, like uh, something, we just started hanging out more. And like now we, we hang out all the time. We text, like we tweet, like, you know, it's great. And then I was at the wedding. Oh, you are? I was going to yeah. ask you if you were at the wedding. So yeah. what was that like? That was crazy. I mean, it was just very interesting to see, like, another show film, like, firsthand um, and how they do it. And obviously, they're all professionals by now at filming. Um, and but it's hard to film a wedding. I oh, mean, yeah. Stassi says, like, like, that's the hardest thing about her picking a venue with Bo in Italy because, like, a lot of places she wants, like, you can't film. Like, they just won't allow right. filming. Well, it's that's, also like, hard layer. to film, like, in Europe for an American reality show because they right. just don't care. Right. So, uh, what, what are you offering right. them? Nothing. Nothing. Like, they're not going to get anything, yeah. really. Interesting. So, what... Any fun stories about, like, hanging out with Jax and Brittany at night? Like, I'm sure they're fun to party with. I'm sure Kristen's fun to party with. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, we've just had some really fun times, but, I mean, honestly, the best of them, it's like, they're actually really chill. Like... We'll just go to Jack to Jackson Brittany's house and sit around and watch weird like murder documentaries and eat and be in their pool and like hang out. It's actually surprisingly they're very chill. All I of mean, them. it's shocking to me that like Vanderpump Rules is so fucking big 
And Summer House just never, like, I'm not knocking. It just never found It that. never found anything. Like, I mean, Stassi is fucking huge now. Like, yeah. those shows sell out. Her book tour, I mean, like, Stassi's humongous. I think the difference is, is just. Yeah, like, what do you was, think the difference is? I think that there was not enough personal life really put on the show because it is all fun and like right and it's over a weekend not, yeah i mean they show those mini clips right. of new york and you don't really um you don't really like get to know somebody just through their relationship drama that's not really that interesting like right. somebody dating um and i think that it was really hard to focus on personal drama like when I'm out there on the weekend, supposed to be filming, like, this is where we come to have fun. Like, I'm not going to be like, I'm so sad and depressed about, right. you know, this stress in my life. It's like, the Hamptons. You want to You're not fun. supposed to be doing that. And, like, but but I think that that vulnerability and stuff is what makes a good show. Because when you care about the cast, then you care about the show. Totally. But I also think that the revolving door that Summer House has been doesn't help it at all. Right, like you're saying too many cast changes, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, yeah. And then, so that day you were hanging out with Kristen, what, that night you were with her too when you ran, or like when you guys were with Kyle and Amanda, or you yeah. left, or... So it's so very what interesting. Was that we like? went to dinner before Watch What Happens Live, and uh, we were just catching up. We're at Restoration Hardware Rooftop, just That's a good one. Although out. they don't have vodka. That's my problem. They yeah, only have beer wine. and wine only. I know. So that's the only reason why I have an issue with it, but go on. Um, so we're hanging out there, and we're talking, and she's kind of like asking if any updates on like if I've talked to anybody and she's like oh my god she's like um Colin and Amanda had responded to my story that I was here and she knows that I hadn't spoken to them and she's like should I text them and I was like whatever just do it I was like just do it she's like she's like they probably won't even like say right. yes like it's a Tuesday and like I can meet you at midnight like they they won't say yes and um right and like, of course they immediately wrote back yes we'll be there um so i was like oh my god this is i wasn't sure um but i've been going through a lot of life changes i'm actually um i'm gonna be six months sober on march 3rd oh wow so like i've been congratulations such a better place and much happier like I just kind of downward spiraled after our summer house and had like a lot of free time and nothing to do and money to spend. And, yeah. uh, and I was going out a lot. And, but so I'm at this place of like, I want to make amends with people. And like, honestly, Colin and Amanda at the time, I felt like what, what all went down was, you know, really big, but like looking back, like it wasn't that deep. Like it was, it, you know, we both, we each had our own side and like both are valid, right. but um, I think that they, I just didn't really want to keep doing it because honestly too, since Lauren moved, like going to any of these events, I was always so stressed about seeing these people yeah. when Lauren was oh, here. And we would, I get it. Like I'm, Yes, I get it. There's when certain Lauren people that here, I do not want to see myself. Yeah, when Lauren was here and we were together, like, it was fine. We went to these events, like... Right, like, at least like, you had someone. Yeah, because we right. had somebody who was in my same situation. But, like, I was always stressed about seeing them at events. And I'm like, you know what, whatever. So she's like, this is so Kristen Doty. She's like, you know, it'll be fine. She's like, I'll be right there. Like, oh, I'll my God. I'm be obs- right I'm, there. I'm like Anything in love. She's I'm like, if you're uncomfortable. You just tell me. You look at me. You wink at me. Like, just tell me if you're uncomfortable. And um, and so we're at Watch What Happens Live, and I'm like, whatever. And she was on with Essie Cup, who was amazing. Yeah. And like, Essie Cup looked in her dressing room one time and said, oh, hey. And I was like, she doesn't know who I am. Um, but then afterwards, she did, which was crazy. And um, I was telling her about it, and we're walking to the bar, and she's like, it'll be fine. Just, what are they going to say to you? They're coming now. It's not like you're showing up. Right. Like, um, and I didn't know if they knew that I was going to be with Kristen or not, because I was already on her story. But yeah. they walked in, and I could see them coming in, and I was like, whatever. And so I just went right up to them, said hi, and hugged them, and like, just kind of like small and hot for a second and then yeah. everybody's getting their drinks or whatever. But then after a little bit, I like talked to Amanda first and just kind of like, you know, 
And you we just agreed to squash it. it. And like, I was asking her about her wedding and like, I'm a wedding planner. So I was doing all this shit. And, and then Kyle came over and like, literally Kyle and I are talking and everything's fine, but I can see Chris and Dodie in the background. Just like, are you okay? Oh my God. Like, looky, like just kind of like sipping her drink, like looking for me to give her a sign. And then she comes right up behind Kyle's shoulder and she's like, hi. And I'm like, we're good, we're good. <laughs> like, so like you guys Kristen. have kind of squashed the beef now. Yeah. So, I mean, where we left it off was just kind of like, I, you know, said what I needed to say. And I was like, I'll look, I was like, I'll reach out to you. And like, I want to talk again, like later. But like, I was like, I wasn't expecting this tonight, but like, this is where my head is. And like, I think we should talk again, but like, who knows where we go. But this is stupid and and they kind of agree yeah they were like we each had you know reasons why we're her and but at the end of the day we can at least we can both see other people's sides of the story and that's what does make it hard because when you're when you're friends it's hard enough to be friends with people but then when you have this overlay of like being on a tv show and like you don't totally know like did they do this because they were told or suggested or right. they felt this pressure or like, or for their own yeah, storyline of like, I want to keep my job. Yeah. You have to like, and listen, there are people on TV, especially the housewife, like they will throw their best friend under the bus. If it's one more season. Yeah. You're trying to take it with a grain of salt. And like, you know, a year ago, I never would have had this conversation, but now I'm like, you know, it's, it's time to move on like I have moved on with my life and like so many things are great and like so I don't want to keep being angry about Summer House like that right. is so stupid it's like a moment in time right. in your life I mean and then that's just two more things so like one do you think you'll ever reconcile with Carl this to the same extent mm. so I don't really have anything I don't think who knows she may be mad at me but I don't really have anything against Lindsay, so I think we could easily reconcile. Carl, I think that... I mean, he walked out of a bar. I think that I don't have any reason to reconcile with him. I can own up to what I've done. He'll never own up to what he's done. Right. But, like, he's the only person that, like, I actually don't want to be friends I, There's some people no are reason just to not be friends. Meant to be friends. You're not a good friend. You're not a good person. You're not an honest person. Why do I like? What is the point? You're just not interested. Yeah. And I mean, do you think you know? Because I always find it interesting, like having been on a show for two seconds myself. Like, what do you think are the most positive things that came from your experience in Summer House? And then like. Are there negatives? I mean, besides all this drama with other people, like, yeah. has it negatively impacted your life? You know, like, I, you hear about people that lose jobs, like people go on right. Big Brother and then they go back to their job and they're like, you're fired because you made a fool of yourself on TV. Yeah. Like, what are the positives and negatives? So I think that for positives for me, you know, one, it has given me a lot of opportunity to do things that, you know, normally you can't do. Yeah. Um, the exposure and everything. But also it really made me more insightful, more like like observant of my behaviors and why I do them. And and like obviously it points out some flaws. Um, but it also made me a lot more open in my life. Um in all ways, but like sharing the story that I did with my parents, like it really like that was a big thing to put out there. And so after doing that, like everything else seems so easy. Like if I'm mad at you, I'll tell you I'm mad. Like, right. like which can be a positive and a negative. Like, I mean, some people might not like that brashness, but I think it helps you express and not keep stuff in because you can't do that while you're filming. You can't keep stuff bottled up. But right. I think that that was a really positive thing. The negative things, I think, I mean, there was a lot of negatives that made it hard to kind of bounce back because there was this big, especially after leaving the show and leaving the show the way we did, and it seemed very dramatic exit and all these rumors flying around. It was really hard, like, because we can't exactly explain. And, like, even when I'm explaining now how we left the show, no one's going to believe it. Right. <laughs> so, um, like, everyone has their preconceived notions. Right. So, that was really hard to deal with for a while because 
I felt like I had given so much to something and it was just like snatched away. I described it once as like, you're not given this thing. You're not given a role on Summer House. You're loaned a role and they can like take it back at any time. Oh yeah. Like, There's no job security in any of these shows, especially on Bravo. Yeah. Which is something I had never really thought about. And like, they just leave you there. They do not care. I have never heard well, when like, Bravo anyone is checking with you, in on me. Yeah, no, they're done with you. Like when they're done, they're done. And it's like you never existed. Right. More or less. It was very interesting because I feel like I got all those meetings about, um, you know, going. I met with development and I met with other people at Bravo after leaving Summer House. But I think that it was all just to try to keep me open to coming back during the summer. Interesting. Um, because. After they had finished filming, I never heard anything from them right, again. Right. Um, or after I made it clear, like, I'm not shooting somewhere right. else. Then it was like, okay, well. Um, but I think that it was really hard dealing with just kind of readjusting back to life and, like, figuring yeah. out what you're going to do. And do you want to keep doing TV or, like... I, and like I wasn't sure. Like after leaving Summer House, I got I've gotten so many calls from other networks and other things. And like I've been put on like MTV, so many MTV things. And every time I'm like, no, I just don't think it's gonna be like the best. Like I just didn't know if I wanted to go back under that microscope. But right, you know, honestly, now I do think that like I'm in a much better place in my life. Like and where these. The things that really affected me about being on season two of Summer House, I don't think would affect me as much anymore. And that makes sense. Um, honestly, if they did call me to go back for another season, if by some chance it got renewed, it, it would be something that I would consider. You know, I that have repaired sense. my relationship with with Kyle and Amanda somewhat, and like I think my relationship with Lindsay is still somewhat intact, and like. I think that that is a very interesting story to show. Well, I was um, going to say, that would make good TV. And also, yeah. they do need ratings, so it would... Um, that would, yes, that would make good TV. But I think that, you know, it would be it would be something that I would definitely seriously consider because I, especially if only for the fact that it would be a little vindication for me because, I mean, people think that I am just this horrible, like, miserable person from my edit and, like... It really wasn't that fat, uh, like, that way. And, like, I just want to show people, like, I had, I felt like before going on Summer House, people would describe me as a happy person right. and fun to be around. And after that, you know, it was a lot of stress and a lot of pressure that I wasn't prepared to deal with. And, like, obviously there was other things going on in my life, too. Right. But it really made me sad that people didn't see me as that same person right. anymore. Right. So, like, if you went back, it would be – you would do it differently, per se. Yeah. I think. I mean, I would still, obviously, uh, hold people accountable. I think that that's the r way that I would go back is if it was going to be an honest show again. Right. Because season one, I do think, like, they told the story of what was happening because that was what the show set out to be, was that a show sense. about a group of friends and their relationships and how they change. And it kind of lost sight of that. That makes sense. And then before we go, what is going on now in your life? You are a wedding planner? Yeah. So I have done events for a long time. Now I'm back. I'm working with a couple wedding planners. Living in New York. Living in New York still. Um, full New Yorker. Single. I am dating. I thought you sure. were. Well, if, in Googling you and doing my three minutes of research this morning, what it said, because they, they had, it literally, this article was like three weeks ago. It says, what are they up to now? Oh, I it, saw that. It's like very brief. For you, it said, you know, you're living in New York as a party planner. Okay, that's kind of true. It said that you are single, but I didn't think you were based on a very quick stalking of your Instagram. Yeah. Well, it's actually not that person that's on my Instagram. That's one of uh -oh. my really good friends. But, well, there you um, go. Christian. But um, I... 
kind of had been taking an Instagram hiatus since like December. Um, and it's a, it's that's a really smart thing. And I so have it, I'm and about it three you months into wow. a relationship, which is interesting. But that's amazing. Um, Maybe that's because you took a hiatus from Instagram. I mean, it is nice, but now I'm like, okay, I'm done. But like, it's so hard to get back into it. I'm like, what's the first? How am I? I've got to come up with the whole plan. It's exhausting. I really need to step away from Instagram myself. And yeah. then the other thing on your, where are they now? It also said hangs out regularly with members of the cast of Vanderpump Rules. <laughs> so that is what they say about you now, which that wow. is not a bad, yeah. that is not a bad thing That's to have. not a bad thing. Listen, and... I, I am jealous. I am jealous on many, many levels. Yeah. Um, so I am doing That's a lot good. of events. I just did, actually last night, I just threw an engagement party for Hannah and Dylan from The Bachelor. Really? Um, and I do a lot of parties. I that's summer good to know. In, you know, just Vogue. with all these housewives that I know, they're always asking for, yeah. like, okay. This oh my is God. Good yeah, to know. please. I would love to do something. But, and um, anyone listening, I guess, where can we find you then? Yeah. Is, is it Instagram? The best place to find me is Instagram okay. at Stephen McGee. Um, I do check my DM message. You requests. do. That's um, how I connected with you. But yeah, uh, I honestly, you know, this whole summer house ride. I would not change it for anything. That's great. I think that also for me, you know what? Getting off the show was the best thing that could have happened to me because I don't even know where I would be if I had done another season. I'd probably be in a gutter somewhere. Like, I definitely wouldn't have made it to this podcast. And you're six months sober. So, yeah. like, that's maybe because of Summer House and, like... I think that it definitely opened my eyes to a lot and, like... I mean, when when you have that much free time, there's not much to do. But, you know, there's a bar open every hour in New York. Like, yes. But I think that leaving the show at the time I did was great. But, you know, I'm always open to whatever happens. That's great. Well, I think you'd be a great addition to go back. And I think you'd be a great addition to other reality TV shows. So 